I'm a believer who's in recovery and struggles with anger. My name is Isaiah Sefe, and I am 23 years old and live with both of my parents. I go to school at Long Beach City College. I love playing video games. Most people think I'm a pretty nice guy. If you see me at the church, I am mostly a quiet guy, and I'm mostly quiet because I don't trust too many people. Even though you see me in loud places where there's a lot going on, you might find that I am refreshingly quiet and attentive. Some of the reasoning why I'm so quiet is because I have some trust issues with people I was brought up with. I mostly find it easier not to talk and just to listen to people. Some people find it hard to talk to me because I have nothing to say. I want to say that I am quite the term gentle giant. Though I'm 220 and 6'2", I'm not the type to use that against you. My friends will tell you that I'm quite compassionate for others. I'm also very passionate, which plays into my anger. I'm also a daredevil. Only a few people know this about me, but I like to share with them how much I ride my bike and enjoy exercise. Before I was in recovery, I was an athlete. I was young and didn't know what to do with myself. I would smoke weed and walk around Carson. I used to walk around with a chip on my shoulder. Nobody could tell me anything that I didn't want to hear. When I was playing football, I learned a few things. It taught me hard work and dedication. I learned how to talk to others with authority. I became a man when before there was very little. I did become angrier and more violent. The stress it put on my body would, and my mind would make me think about the things that most people would complain about. People would complain all the time and I would hear them think, wow, how easy do they have it? I got into a fight on the football field. My pride and anger was so huge. I was so angry because I had a lot of things on my mind and the stress of life was pulling me down. I quit the team and left my high school. I fell into a deep depression. I went into a high school in Torrance that dealt with people who had mental disabilities. I didn't feel anything was wrong with me but my anger and pride. I did good at that school and got a 4.0 grade average. Everyone was so proud of me. I got out of high school and right away went into Long Beach City College. I took general classes and did great in my classes. The depression was still on me. I would honestly go home after every day and when I would mess up, think of committing suicide. Some people might look at me strange and say, wow, you got it so good. I don't see why you'd want to do that. The truth is I was unhappy with my life. I quit college for two years and took it easy. I quit going outside and would stay home and play video games. This is where I was really in a rut. I would play video games all day and night. My parents would tell me to go to sleep and I would get very angry. I would get so mad that they would tell me to go to sleep. My fights started getting worse and I really started becoming violent. When I would fight with my parents or with my family, I wouldn't know what to do. I was so angry and couldn't deal with my emotions. All the anger that was drilled into my head during football would come out on my family. I was a monster. This was when I really started thinking of killing myself. I was taking medication to help me with my moods. If anyone is like me that takes medication, you will know what I mean when I say this. My parents would tell me, Isaiah, you seem a little crazy today. Have you taken your medicine? <laughs> what an insult to a human that felt like to me. Everyone in the world is going crazy, and I'm the one who needs to take pills. <laughs> <laughs> I would fight very often with my parents. It got so bad that it was almost every week I would think about killing myself. I don't know what it was. The same vicious cycle repeated every day because I couldn't fix myself. I didn't even know how. One day I get into a fight with my dad and he tells me in a commanding voice, sit down. I think to myself, or what? I look him in the eyes and told him no. I ran away from home. I ran down the street barefooted. I was running because I knew there was a church on the corner. Fear comes. What if the church isn't even open? I reach the church and look around suspiciously. I walk through the door and peer around. Women in the front and in the sanctuary, some men. I walk over to them. Fear in my steps, but I need to get this off my chest. I come to them and tell them about my fights with my dad. Let's pray for him, they said. They gather around me in a circle and put hands on me. They pray over me in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. They let me know their names and talk me over. I get tired and sleepy and want to go home. They give me some shoes. Pastor Terry takes me home. He talks with my parents and then they come in and tell me after that they were worried about me and that they just care for me. 
I come back to church that Sunday, from that Sunday to the Thursday, then the next Thursday to the Sunday, I come back all the time. I've not missed a day of church since that day I fought with my father. <laughs> Coming Sunday and Thursday wasn't enough for me. I was feeling unsatisfied. I look on the panel flap on the handouts and see that there's a Friday service. Of course, I was a bit hesitant to come out on a Friday night because everything that I had heard about Celebrate Recovery is that it's, not, it's only for people who use drugs. It was a Friday night and I knew the, of the service. I was getting my hopes too high. I'm thinking about the service at home and six o'clock hits. I start walking over to the church. I come through the front door. My first step into recovery, I am greeted by Howard. You can tell just by looking at Howard that this man has had some struggles. <laughs> he surprised me with his expression. He greets me with a big smile and says, welcome to celebrate recovery. I sit through the service and barely remember it. I think it was a testimony. The small group starts and Howard lets me know gently, hey bro, I'm excited to see you here. It was so welcoming. The session starts and we talk about the weirdest things, the things you can't just normally talk about in the church. I felt like I was in a group of friends that were talking about stuff so personal. The meeting is ending and I let Howard know I wasn't even gonna come this Friday. He encouraged me and says, bro, that's just the devil. There was so much going on in my life and it was exciting to see where people were at and I was not alone. The people were not afraid to say something that might offend another person as it is customary for people talking in church. The group was only there to encourage one another and not fix one another. I have not found any fellowship like this anywhere being sober. The only place I remember where we could talk like this was my old neighborhood. It was just a rare joy to find people that also want that type of fellowship. I've been coming to church a lot really, but I was really looking forward to seeing them every Friday. I can honestly say that I've made so many amends where there were resentments. I've gotten through my hard days through practicing the steps. The step number nine, to make an apology to those I've hurt is special to me. There were some days where I couldn't live with how I felt, but the steps led me back to step number eight, step number nine, and step number 10. They are basically to write down everyone that you've hurt, offer forgiveness to them, and if you're wrong, promptly admit it. James 1.19, my dear brothers, understand this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Every time I call my sponsor, he would share this scripture with me. He tells me that this is the scripture that will help you with your anger. It is true. My common trap is to blow up in anger that I have built up. I slip with my words and say the wrong things, bad stuff happens. Ephesians 4.26, be angry, yet do not sin. Do not let the sun set upon your anger, and do not give the devil a foothold. Amen. This scripture tells me that the day is not over. Through my journaling, my steps, and a little bit of humbleness, I can go out of my way to make an apology so I don't feel shame at night. Mm -hmm. One of the things my sponsor always says is keep your side of the street clean. Mm -hmm. Matthew 5 and 9, blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Mm -hmm. It was... Howard gave me the best advice I've heard. When you start getting to that point where you're irritable, restless, and discontent, just make that phone call. I know that I can call my sponsor Johnny or anyone on my support team to uplift and pray for me. I have avoided so many fights and so many breakdowns through wise counseling. I don't have to tell my family why I didn't blow up on them. I don't have to explain to them why I'm not yelling at them. It was refreshing to do it this way. I have been able to restore some of the relationships in my life. One of the relationships that God has restored to me was my parents. My dad tells me all the time, I'm proud of you, son. Woo! That's right. Yeah. Woo! My mother tells others that I've come so far through the last year of my life. Amen. I've been in Celebrate Recovery for about a year. My parents can tell that the church has had an influence on my life. Another relationship God has restored to me was my sister's relationship. Before, my pride and anger would cause conflict. Through working steps number 8, 9, and 10, I am able to apologize to my sister. When I start feeling irritable, restless, and discontent, I make a phone call to my sponsor or my support team. They pray me through it and direct me to the steps. Through doing this, me and my sister's relationship is stronger. 
through this darkness of glory. Yeah. The most, most important thing is that you make that phone call. I do have those bad days and those bad moments, but I think it's counteracted with the phone call. It's something about the phone call and telling someone your problems that begins to work itself out as you talk about it. God has slowly allowed me to stop getting into fights the more I turn over to him. I don't stay up late because I have to go to church in the morning. As a result, my mom is telling me to go to bed. Then we don't have to argue. <laughs> That's right. One of the things God is helping me with is my isolation and depression. Howard says the first banana to leave the bunch gets peeled. <laughs> When I come to church, I don't have to listen to myself fight with my mind. It is really therapeutic to shut your mind out for an hour or two. Even though I was violent, even though I was angry, I don't have to live like that anymore. There's a different way and there are people that will support me to get where I need to be. I'm truly grateful by and humbled by Chapel of Change and Celebrate Recovery. It has allowed me to become the person that I want to be. I know where I came from and I know what I look like. I am proud to become what I have been. This was not always the case. I know that I was messed up and that I needed help. I just didn't know where to look. Yes. I have troubles trusting my doctor because he was always trying to give me more pills and never seemed to care about my welfare. I went on a rebellion and refused to take my pills. I went around for a year and a half. Then something happened when I got in another fight with my mom. She said, Isaiah, you are depressed and need to take pills. I shared this at one of our recovery meetings and I was surprised to find out that others were taking medication as well. It took away the sting that I am crazy. Now I realize that my doctors are trying to help me. I am not where I want to be, but know where I was. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. The small groups are what has really helped me. As casual as it might seem where anyone can say anything, I believe that some of the wisest things I have heard have come from our small groups. It really takes me to another place, and I come leaving refreshed knowing that I'm not the only one. The Step Study Guide has revealed a lot of things that I need to work on in my life. It is a maintenance program that is meant to help keep you in check. I am thankful and grateful for the Step Study Guide and to be taking it with my brothers in Christ. Amen. The program has done so much for me. It has taught me true discipleship among the followers of Jesus. James 5.16, therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have Celebrate Recovery, I would be in the mental health programs being so unhappy. I think the biggest difference between Celebrate Recovery and mental health programs was that I've seen people smiling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 1 Peter 1.8, though you have not seen him, you love him, and though you do not see him now, you believe in him, and rejoice with an inexpressible and glorious joy. I do realize that when the brothers help me out, that it is in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. My sponsor always tells me that God gets the glory and that God is good. I see that everyone in the church is working for the glory of God, That's and everyone does everything in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I believe that Jesus is doing a mighty work in Celebrate Recovery. I believe that he is working among us. To the newcomer who just may be visiting, or maybe you come in once in a while, I want to tell you, give God a shot. I've tried a lot of things, but I'm really enjoying this relationship with God. I want to tell you to stay for the small groups after. I want to tell you to get some numbers. I want to tell you that you're not alone. Amen. No. Yeah. The meeting is part of recovery. It takes off um, some of your worrying and thinking that may make you uneasy. We have great leaders in Celebrate Recovery that can help you get started. I try to share whenever it is possible the love of God. I tell my family and my old friends the testimony of how I came to Christ. Sometimes I do inc come into contact with people from my past. When it is appropriate, I let them know what God has done for me. I don't want to be that guy that is pushing God on everyone. I just want to share the love of Jesus Christ as it was done for me. That's right. I want to give a special shout out to Johnny, my mentor. I want to thank my support team. I want to thank everyone here at the Celebrate Recovery. Amen.